Even before I was born, actually, I'm kind of a miracle baby. My mom didn't know that her water broke like a week ago. Uh, she was the first, you know, she, I was the first for her. So she had no idea um, until she went for a checkup um, and the doctor couldn't hear a heartbeat. So I was rushed. I mean, my mom and my dad rushed to the hospital, um, you know, um, and I was born. And uh, from there, uh, my parents named me Christina. Really, um, the word in my name itself, Christ is there. So uh, to glorify God. So from there, um, I guess. I guess then I would say fast forward around nine years where my family was brutally attacked in the middle of the night. So I just want to give a little bit of heads up. Uh, it is a brutal story. I'm going to be very quick about it, you know, okay. where in the middle of the night, you know, our family was brutally attacked uh, um, by thieves. Uh, so we were living in Sri Lanka. It has nothing to do with the war. It had to do something else. Uh, to this day, I'm not too sure what it was the intention of those individuals are, but uh, I forgive them. But anyways, uh, so we were really attacked. Where my we used to like my brother and I would sleep with my parents, of course, and um, my parents and I, I think I would say, were the most, and we were actually attacked by with an axe. Um, so I received um, a cut on my on the very middle of it. So can't really do middle parting on my hair. So it has to be a side. Anyways, um, uh, with that, that actually resulted on my right side being paralyzed. Um, my brother, um, he was he was almost, you know, would have instantly be killed. He thought in the middle of the night the intruder was one of us. Um, and he was just play fighting. And the person just missed it like with a half an inch uh, to his ear. So if he has like if he was like cut right there, he would have died instantly. But it was just a quick chip. So praise be to God. Um, and, um, you know, in the middle of that night, uh, my parents were just, you know, uh, really bad. And uh, my mom received the grace to stand up and go get the call. And we were say we were like taken to the hospital with our family breaking to the house again. And when we went to the hospital, um, you know, the doctors looked at the three of us, my parents and me, and said, like, these guys are, these guys are not going to survive. Um, they said, uh, they actually looked at me and said, and they looked, you know, they evaluated me and said, uh, she's not going to walk again. Um, and that I would be paralyzed on my right side for the rest of my life. Mind you that my family has three doctors and when they came to the hospital, they were just shocked and just heartbroken and they were just, they just didn't know what to do. So, um, yeah, so I would say that was January 99. Um, for me, my miracle I would say is on January 20th, uh, because when that happened, I didn't have any um, any sensation. I, it was just paralyzed. But on St. Sebastian's Feast, they actually f felt uh, like sensation when people were touching my hand, my leg. I started to feel again. So I believe, uh, you know, through the intercession of St. Sebastian um, and his prayers for me, uh, I was I was healed. Um, you know, after that three three months of uh, physiotherapy, and here I am. You know, I'm I'm walking. I'm dancing. Um, yeah. If you meet me in person, I love to dance. So from there, our fam. So praise be to God. Um, right now, I think yeah, it was this year actually. Uh, we celebrated 25 years of uh, where doctors said you guys only live 10 years. We praise God and say you know no, God, our God is way bigger. It, we're going out running on 25 years. Wow. So on so on the 7th of January, our family comes together, the four of us and. And we kind of call it and celebrate it our death anniversary because it's a new life for us. Because, um, you know, God is so good. So then after my parents uh, decided to move to Canada, um, and then is when my teenage years started, right? So I would say even though I received those tangible uh, experiences and miracles um, that God is alive, I really didn't meet Jesus one-to-one. Uh, -one. So it was really... Um, like I knew Jesus more of like, I want to say like when you're born Catholic, kind of a, that experience, but I really didn't have that intimacy with the Lord. I didn't know him as a person. Uh, I knew he was God up there, you know? Right. So, um, so he was actually at a Gethsemane. I'm sure for those of you in Toronto, I know Gethsemane ministries. Um, so they are, they had a youth retreat during March break and it was during adoration 
and they were just uh, leading us in a reflection. Um, and I was in a very defeated place. I think it was around grade 11, grade 12. Listen, I'm not really a good student, okay? I'll be honest with you. I'm really bad with academics. <laughs> so in high school, um, I like to walk around, take pictures, do all the things that were not important, okay? So, um, so school was really bad. So it was that time where you have to apply for university and uh, the pressure was coming in. So I was just, was just in a place of very defeated because I wasn't getting any acceptances uh, to universities and just because, um, you know, in Sri Lankan culture, education is very important and, right. you know, that performance mentality and it's hard, right? So I just in a very defeated place. So during adoration, um, as the, you know, as, as we were led, um, it was something like to this day, I could, I just feel it, you know, just adoration, um, as a reflection was led, I felt this warmth that melted me. Because when you're in that defeated place, you are hard. Your heart is hard because you're just defeated. Nothing. You, you can't even accept anything positive. You're just down. But in adoration, I was just melted. You know, everything that Exodus says, or right, your heart will be melted uh, by him. You know, um, and that's what happened. And I and that was my encounter with Abba, uh, Abba Father. And uh, so I. I need, I just cried. I was just crying and it just was a, such a release. And I was like, I felt loved after so long of not being loved, uh, to be feeling embraced. And I would say after that, I went looking for Jesus. I went looking for God for that same experience, almost like a drug, you know, like I want that high again. So I went from like prayer meetings to retreats. Sorry. Those consolations. Like, kind yeah, of I was just looking for that. And, just calm, it literally, it wasn't doing it. And then um, around 2009, my parents uh, actually started a, a prayer group, a charismatic prayer group. Uh, it was a branch from Sri Lanka called the Community of the Risen Lord. Um, the foundation retreat uh, that helps us, um, um, helps us to, it was, it, it was a retreat that taught us the four steps, which was going to help us to continue to, um, uh, like continue our intimacy with the Lord, continue it actually taught us how to pray. Right. Okay. And so I was after those four steps, uh, you know, I took that to prayer and I was persevering. Like, I'm just going to do it every day, every day. And it was during that intimacy, the Lord just spoke to me and, um, just reading the Bible and the Lord, that the words would read back to me and it would be so real. Um, and, uh, and from there, the intimacy grew. So the four steps, we're going to be quick about it. It's, it's very easy, right? It's a very easy tool. It says the first step is come as you are. I love you. So it's just easy to be there. Just be yourself. And two is give the truth of your heart. And then three, surrender. And uh, four is, you know, allow the Holy Spirit to rest upon you. Wow. So it's just the infilling of the Holy Spirit. It's just imagine you could do that in five minutes every time you wake up in the morning, right? So just a quick one. And what's um, the first that you said? First is come as you are. I love you. I love that. Yeah. With the idea that God is love and he delights in you, right? That's correct. Yeah. Like, uh, so we have a Bible verse that goes in, in association with it is Romans 8, 39. Neither height nor death nor anything else in creation can separate you from God's love, nothing. So just come as you are, right? And I think that's how even, you know, mass starts, right? Just yeah. come as you are. So that grew my intimacy with the Lord. Like uh, from there, like I met Jesus as my brother uh, through the prodigal son story. Um, Jesus was like the older brother for me and um, just, just that intimacy. And then, uh, you know, Jesus as my lover, um, and then later on, uh, Jesus, in, you know, Jesus was so patient and then, um, so I would say such a gentleman, uh, then he introduced me to the father, just as scripture says in John, right? I will introduce you to the father. I will take you to the father. Um, so like one whole year, like I was just spending time with the father and then things just kept on growing and growing. And I would say, um, I would say that I, the Lord was like almost starting to create this, um, 
desire or like this knowing that there is more. So I was, I was always in the watch out. I was always on the lookout. Like, what is more? What does it mean? Right. Um, so, so then I would say just before the pandemic started, um, through the CCRC, I was, I was one of the counselors at that time. Uh, they introduced me to Encounter Ministries. Um, they said they had just come back from a conference. They had just come back from this uh, healing boot camp, and they were telling all these stories. Right. And, then they, and then they invited me uh, to this, um, there's a prophetic boot camp. And I'm like, ooh, that sounds interesting. And something was tugging in my heart because I was always inclined to the prophetic. I felt like the Lord was speaking, but I just didn't know, is it me or is it the Lord speaking? Um, so I was very much inclined to it. And then when I went there, you know, it felt home. I was meant to be there and just the craziest things just happened that day, uh, that three days, you know, that and I think, US, it, you had was that in the U S where you had to it travel? Was, yeah. Yes. Yeah. It was in, it was in Brighton. Okay. I think I'm not too sure what the state is. Michigan, Brighton, Michigan. Yeah, yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't know if you know about Encounter Ministries, David. It's uh, super yeah, cool. I love Encounter Ministries. I think they're doing amazing work for the kingdom. Yes. And yeah, like uh, it just opened. Like if I did not go to that prophetic uh, boot camp, I don't, I'll be honest with you that I don't know if I would have survived uh, COVID because at that time I was uh, living by myself. So we came back because like they just teach you and they just make it very simple. Right. And some of the craziest things, you know, um, that was that that we were taught, and then we practiced it. And you know, like if I could share like two stories from that boot camp, is like one person, like r total random strangers, they don't know, they teach you, and then you have to go practice it, mm -hmm. right? And then this random stranger is like, the Lord's saying that you're like a young Joshua. I'm like, how do you know that? It's like the Lord seems to say that you ask a lot of questions. Like, how do you know that? You know, I'm like, I was just blown away. Like, how does this person know so much about me? It's because the father was saying that to her. Right. And then something that I received and at the, with the very last thing that we had to do was get into a circle and then go like a rapid fire prophetic thing around. And um, there was this priest, like we were forming circles and I'm like, and I see this priest walking and he's a very tall priest. And I'm like, I can't prophesy over a priest. No, I'm not doing it. Nope. Jesus just send him to that circle, not my circle. Anyways, he made it my to my circle. And then um, so it was my turn to share with him. And when I prayed the Father's heart for him, the Lord, he was very tall, okay? Uh, like our Bishop Leo, he's tall, right? So you're tall, actually. You're tall. Those yes. of you who don't know, David's really tall. <laughs> okay. Um that's what a lot of people say that when they actually meet me in real life, because they're like so shocked. Because they yeah, like, I was shocked. Not gonna lie to you, I was like. Oh. And uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm like five foot. Okay, so he was really tall. I had to look up really. Anyways, so this uh, priest came by, and the Lord showed me a little bird, and it was like almost like a blue jay. Right. Um, and the beautiful thing about again about encounters, they teach you, um, and you know how to hear the word, see the word. And the beautiful thing is they ask you to ask for feedback from those of you that you share the word with. Okay. And because um, I'm giving the word and this priest was like very much poker face, no reaction. You can't even know, like, are you in the right, right? So when it was time for poker face, I mean, when it was time for feedback, right. you know what he does? He just undoes his shirt. And the picture that I saw of the bird is tattooed in his like arm. Wow. If there was a table, I would have flipped it. I was like, no way. This is not real. Like, oh my gosh. So, and he was just laughing because the Lord, the interpretation was like, he's like this little bird on a, on a, on a, on a branch who's just amazed at what the Lord has done in his life. And he's like, yep, you're absolutely right. Uh, I am amazed at what God has done in my life. So yeah, from there, um, David, um, my life was turned upside down, I would say, thanks to Encounter Ministries. Um, I knew this was real because I came back home 
And I shared this with all my young friends, my young adults, I would say, because from the CRL community, like we have a bunch of young, young adults. So what did you do during COVID is you talked, right? Like there's this one guy I was talking for like till two o'clock in the morning. And, you know, from there throughout COVID, uh, these young people start to prophesy and, you know, and, you know, of it was a reality because it didn't stay with me. Mm. It was just kind of going like wildfire. So like all what was happening in the Bible, what the Bible says was happening. It was a reality to me. Like Acts 2, 17, your young men will, will prophesy. Right. They will see dreams. Um, I was just amazed. And, you know, when I was at Brighton, the Lord was like, I was telling the Lord, Lord, this can't stay with me. I need to bring it to Toronto. I need my family and friends to know the same thing that I'm learning. So... Yeah, and then during COVID, put the application in to bring a satellite campus here, um, you know, um, and then working with the archdiocese to get the approval. Uh, we finally have the approval. We I have the green awesome. light. Actually, honestly, I was like, yeah, let's yeah. go. Yes, I'm so excited. And this weekend, we just did a school of identity. There was like 85 people and... What? God showed up, man. God showed up and just encounter ministry. That's such an anointing and it's just so beautiful. So yeah, now I am the director for Encounter School of Ministry here in the Toronto campus. And I'm just excited to see what the Lord is doing and he's going to do in Toronto because we need revival here, right? So we need revival. So I'm so excited. And I would say in a short little bit, that's my story and just how Jesus loves me and how I'm partnering up with him. I love that so much. And the journey continues, right? Yes. And, yes. And you're just launching in, in yes. campus. Yes. We're launched. So the two-year program, it's a two-year program. So we'll be launching in September of this year at St. Tim's. Um, you know, my friends joke around and it says like, you know, your life seems to be like never ending. Like, the, you know, the devil tries to kill you, but you're like, you're saying not today, Satan. Like I've just been, I've had so many instances where the Lord, I mean, not the Lord, you know, the enemy tries to like really, you know, end my life, but the Lord has such a protection and I'm so grateful to the Lord, uh, yeah. just on this adventure with him. It is an adventure as the song of songs says, right? So, yeah, yeah absolutely. That's so exciting. Yes. Um, and so if people want to learn, if, if people are in the local area of Toronto and want to check out the Encounter School of Ministry, how can they actually go about doing that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. They could go to Encounter School of uh, Encounter School dot org uh, or just, you know what, you're on Instagram right now. Why don't you just like us Encounter School of Toronto? If you search us up and follow us on Instagram, on Facebook, you, that's the easiest way. Uh, and you'll be able to check us out. Very cool. You got some questions coming in the chat. So okay. one of them is how do I find faith again? Any thoughts there, Christina? How do you find faith? Yeah. It's a loaded question. It is a loaded question. I am so tempted to say, you know, come to one of our encounter ministry events, uh, which one is going to be Pentecost uh, visual uh, on May 18th at St. Tim's at seven o'clock. That's the first one um, because it's going to be a powerful night. For someone that is really searching for the Lord, because um, there has been moments in my life where, like, as much as what I've just described, there be, there are moments, right? Um, that desert moments. You know what I do is I just go sit in the front of the adoration, yeah. and just just again come as you are. Jesus loves. You just know that truth, and just you don't have you know it, the faith. Our faith is not about feelings, right? <laughs> It's just the truth. It's just the knowing. And just hold on to that and just repeat it in front of the Blessed Sacrament. And, and that's where your faith is. I would say, I know, I know the Word of God says, you know, and that it, I'm, I'm not, you know, contradicting myself here either. You know, I think, I can't remember where it is, but, you know, read the Word of God and from there faith proceeds. Um, I think St. Paul wrote it somewhere. Um, so I would say be with, be with Jesus and just know of Romans eight thirty nine. neither height nor death nor anything else in creation can separate you from his love. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen to that. All right. Um, another question to Christina in your journey and path to Christ. Is there any time you felt the enemy was attacking your faith? Oh, hundred <laughs> percent. Like I feel attacked tonight with this video not working. I don't know yes. what's happening. 
the tech issues. I'm like, all right, amen. I guess we're gonna have the the Holy Spirit's gonna be moving. So I yeah, I'm like in my head, I'm also like praying, like Lord, okay, how about we just pray right now? Okay. <laughs> in the name of Jesus, Jesus, can you just make uh David's uh David's camera work, all this technical stuff, send to your holy angels to figure it out so we can see his beautiful face that you have created. Okay. Jesus, just make it work. Amen. Um so yeah, again, I would just go back to adoration. Yes, the, has the enemy, dude. Listen, like my whole story is about the attack. It didn't. The enemy didn't want me to be alive. <laughs> okay, from birth. Yeah. Um, you know, the enemy also has no new tricks. It always. One thing I would say is it's always it's going to always attack the identity attack attack your identity. Right. So just be firm in your identity that you are a child of God, that you are a priest, prophet, and king. And that is your baptismal promises. Stick to that. There, You don't have to worry about the enemy. So I would say, sorry, I was just being passionate about there. So, no, amen. Yeah. What's the All next right. one, David? Yeah, I know. You, they're flying in right now. I can't mm -hmm. even keep up with the chat. All right. Uh, why do you think the charismatic movement seems more like a recent phenomenon? There were, of course, saints that seemed to live in a more charismatic way, but modern one just seems more Pentecostal. Thoughts there? Interesting. Very interesting. I, I think I do think that, like, even like our Pentecostal brothers, there's a lot of them are converting to Catholicism and seeing the 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 realness of the Eucharist. I think that's 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 happening, right? Um, and we have to learn from our Pentecostal brothers and sisters, right? So. And I would say my opinion on that, if it's a recent movement, I think there's been, it's been quiet um, or in like silos and cells in here and there, but in the wide, it's kind of blowing up now. I would say that's because of the Holy Spirit, right? Um, but but we, we also have to learn from our Pentecostal brothers and sisters because they actually... Let's be. Let's face it. Like they, they know. They know that the Holy Spirit is real, and some of us Catholics might be not so much. Mm -hmm. um, so we have to learn from them, and like, and that's what all encounter ministry is all about too. Is, is to activate you in your faith, right? Right. And I don't think a lot of Catholics are being activated. We just know our faith. We haven't experienced our faith. Like Jesus is somewhere there. God is somewhere there. But like, yeah, He's closer than your skin. Like, right closer than your bones. I think that's the song, right? So he truly is. Yeah. I would say, yeah, I would, that's, I would say we have to learn from our Pentecostal brothers, embrace them. Um, and like, why compare and just, just join the joint, join the army. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly. And just that boldness of, yes. of being open to the Holy spirit moving. Yeah, I mean, I, I found myself um, before coming home to the church at a Pentecostal church and I was angry and didn't mm. want to be there and was rolling my eyes. And mm. um, one of the youth pastors approached me and basically asked me if I had ever heard of the Holy Spirit. And I was like, oh, of course, I was raised Catholic. I like, oh, the Holy Spirit. I know the drill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, have you ever encountered the power mm. of the Holy Spirit? And uh, I was like, yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. He, he he just said, "Can I pray for you?" And yeah. he put it on my shoulder, and he yeah. just said, "Can I?" He said, "Father, I just pray for the Father's embrace right now." Amen. I just pray that you love this man. Amen. And I just, I'm not gonna lie, like I felt this presence come over me, and it was just such a moment of encountering the Lord. Yeah, that's yeah. it. And I wouldn't be where I am today if it wasn't for that for that moment, you know. Amen. Yeah. I can move through it for sure. Just, just, he's so simple, right? We don't have to complicate it. Yeah. So, yeah, that's so beautiful. Very similar to mine of at that adoration, right? So, so very yeah. similar. Yeah. I feel you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what is your favorite thing about Encounter School Ministry? I would say the activation, as I mentioned, like, because um, it act it really did activate my faith. Like, the partnering up the invitation of the Lord to go do miracles, to go do wonders. Um, Cause that's what Jesus said. Right. And that's what he promised. Uh, and that's our inheritance. Right. 
but do you do we I didn't know that <laughs> I didn't know that it, I thought it was a very before I want to say encounters like I thought it, I had to do it on my own mm-hmm. right but after encounter I would say it's like no <laughs> there is no performance mentality with the Lord you know right. I am a child of God right I have access to the Father which is the open heaven above me and from there I will minister so that activated so much about my identity and my relationship, like it, my intimacy with the Lord increased so much. Yeah. Um, and I would say that's the beauty of encounter is that they activate you in your faith so that you could evangelize. They'll equip you with the tools, all right? And so deploy, because that was one of the things I would say growing up. Uh, go to Mass, and the, the ending prayer that the deacon says, like, go make disciples of every nation. It always stumped me, and I'm like, I don't know how to, like, <laughs> Thanks. I don't know how to like, right. I, don't, I don't know how to talk to people about Jesus. Am I selling Jesus? Like, I don't know. Right. It was just all these thoughts, but, uh, but encounter ministries really activated the faith, uh, especially my identity and from there to flow and partner up with the Lord. So mm. that's the beauty of encounter. I would say. And somebody just asked, are you going to the conference in June? Absolutely. Are you going is the question. Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to have to pray on that one for sure. Uh, if if it's not this year, just at least once in your lifetime, you got to make it down. Oh, I, I definitely intend to for sure. Have you actually seen the Fearless documentary? Yes, I have. Have you? It's powerful. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So it, emotional at certain point, points. It was it was moving. Honestly. Absolutely. Yeah. For those of you, it's free. It's on YouTube. Go watch it. <laughs> you, you check that. I'll I'll put it in the Instagram stories later. But just even like praying. God, yeah. where do you have to go right now? Mm. You know? And then it's like, go to the street. And yes. Talk to this person, they need prayer. And it's like, what? Yep. Holy Spirit's moving. Yep. It really is amazing. Speaking of the Holy Spirit, what is the Holy Spirit doing in your life right now? Uh, the Holy Spirit is doing a lot. <laughs> He's really stretching my heart. Um, you know, I would say one area is is preparing. I am single right now. He's preparing. For, I feel like the Lord is He's preparing my heart for my vocation, mm-hmm. um, and as well as uh, in this new journey, in just stretching my heart to love like He loves that compassionate heart. Uh, just uh, you know, just yesterday, just praying over people. And just imparting his love, it was just so overwhelming. So the Holy Spirit is really moving in that way, I would say, in my heart. Um, and and just that boldness to really trust them. Um, yeah. Really trust them and just go, because he's with me. Amen to that. Yeah. Well, this is the, the question I usually ask uh, to every guest nearing the end. What is your hope for the future of our church? The hope for the... is is arise my love arise my love um you know my hope for the church is to wake up active be activated in your faith um i pray for revival in toronto especially um because i feel like the church is sleeping just like that initial question about the pentecost um protestant brothers and sisters like i think the catholics might be a little bit sleeping and nonchalant about their faith but no you have so much of a so much of a of uh i want to say a gift as well as as a i want to say like you have an inheritance use it which is your faith your identity so you know i i hope that the church wakes up i hope each of us arise and activates our faith and partners with the lord because we are made for a time as this like you were not made like you weren't born 1500 years ago you were made today right so you know god is god is inviting to partner up with you so arise my love the winter has passed yes. you know so arise my love is is my hope for the church I love that. And being prophetic, yes. you think that we're going to see it in our generation. This wake I, up, this revive, this revival. I see it. I I have hope. I yeah. see it. I see it in families. I see it in you, David. Right? Like I just want to honor you because you know, JP2 said, you know, God is in everyone. It is our duty 
to go search for that puzzle piece of Jesus in each of our lives. And that's what you're doing. And I just want to honor you. Like you're doing this ministry is actually so beautiful that it is searching. You're, you're searching Jesus in my life, right? And all the other guests and the guests to come. Wow. And in turn, they are like people that are listening, right? You know, they meet Jesus one to one because of it is testimony, right? Testimony is the spirit of prophecy of Jesus, right? So I just want to honor you. Those of you who are watching, please like, follow David and support him because we want more and more. And I hope you, all of you get inspired by David as well. So I just want to say thank you, David. No, I really appreciate that. That honestly means so, so much because, um, you know, the earlier question about the enemy, um, mm. it's, it's an ongoing battle. Right. Yes. There's, there's moments of grace, but there's also battles and discouragement. Mm -hmm. And it just yep. feels like the enemy is working overtime just to bring it all down, you know. But yeah. um, friend, I honestly can say that I really felt the Lord's presence as you spoke that to me. So thank you. Freak, I can, can I share, like, I was praying for you, David. I hope this is okay that I was praying for you. And I was just asking the Lord, like, Lord, how do you see David? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I saw you in like, cause I, I've seen you once and you're very tall and you were in a very tall armor wow. and, um, you know, and the Lord was, it was the steel armor with a, with, uh, with a, with a sword. And, um, the Lord was showing like, you know, there'll be dense, but you're like, I think it's Iron Man. I'm not really good with Marvel stuff, but it was like replenishing, like it was, it would have a dent, but it will replenish to brand new. So it just, it seems like the Lord is blessing you with graces and that, uh, he just wants you to know that you are protected. That armor was created in heaven for you and you are wearing it. So I just, I don't know if that resonates in your heart. A lot, but, I, mean, I mean, it speaks to the sacrament of reconciliation because I just keep going. <laughs> yes. That, oh, that's so good. That's so good. So it's, that's kind of the image for me is like, oh, so good. You know but the, mm, uh, so good heals you know yeah beautiful so good thank you jesus yeah. well on that note oh man yeah holy spirit movement for sure amen I, thank you for your yes uh, to jesus and his church and i can't wait to see uh, what the holy spirit does in toronto i mean yes like i too go to mass and you can see a lot of sleeping going on and i'm mm. not uh my neighbors but um yeah there's it's time to wake up and yeah. i believe that encounter ministries is is going to be an incredible place for that yes the praying come holy spirit come we holy will spirit. the red carpet to you amen permission to move amen lord you know we say yes to that yes over and over again over and over and over so uh, if people want to connect and learn more, I know you've you've already kind of shared about going to the website, but how can they go about doing that? Yeah, just um, you could join us again. Come uh, join us on our Encounter Instagram, Encounter School underscore Toronto, uh, and our Facebook, but EncounterSchool.org forward slash Toronto. Or if you go, just want to Google Encounter Ministries, it's probably the first one that comes up and make sure it says Catholic. That's us. Amen. Love Amen. that. Well, yeah. On that note, would you like to close us in prayer tonight? Absolutely. Um, I was just praying for, for this evening as well. And I just sensed the Lord was like filling up a lot of empty jars um, with water. And it was kind of giving me that scene of, uh, of Cana. And it's so cool that you talked about uh, confessions. So I just felt like the Lord, for those of you who are listening, um, you know, you might have some empty jars. You feel like your heart is empty. Um, the Lord just wants to fill you up with that water to purify you and to give him permission. Um, and he's going to pour out new wine in you and, and restore you to that glory from that initial, um, from the garden where he created you in his image and likeness so that you will bear new fruit in here in Toronto or wherever you are. I just sense the Lord just filling up your jars and from water, you will turn it into wine to make good new fruit. So, Lord, I just pray, Lord, Abba Father, we love you, Lord. And we thank you for this time, Lord. Lord, um, I, just, I just thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I, I thank you for my life. And I thank you for allowing me the grace to share your story uh, with my brothers and sisters here. 
Lord, I thank you. Lord, I pray. Um, I pray all the words that were spoken, the conversation that was spoken, Lord. I pray it is from you, Lord Jesus. And if there was words that were not from you, Lord, I pray and rebuke it in the name of Jesus, that it have no influence in any of our lives, Lord. Lord, I pray and I impart uh, the gift of intimacy that you have given me, Lord Jesus, in all my brothers and sisters that are watching, Lord Jesus. Lord, come and embrace them, Lord Jesus. Come and renew their mind and hearts that they are yours, Lord Jesus, and you are theirs, Lord. Lord, come and have your way, Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray for David and his family and his ministry that you multiply, Lord God, a sevenfold, Lord Jesus, more, Lord. And for all of us that are in ministry, Lord, that you protect us, Lord Jesus, that you invite us every morning to awake and with that love, Lord Jesus, that we minister to your brothers and to your sons and daughters. Come, Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Thank you again so much, Christina. Thank you so much, David. You're so awesome. Have a great night. Good night. God bless everyone.